Good morning. We're going to go ahead and get started with our day in the life of a software engineer. I, we are going to be recording this session, so please put your uh, screens on mute. And we also have the chat room available. If you do have questions, please feel free to put your questions or comments in the chat room. I'll be checking those periodically. Right now, I'd like to introduce Lonnie Emmert and Joseph Yancey. Lonnie, I'm going to turn it over to you. Well, thank you, Lisa, and uh, good morning, everyone. We're so glad that you were able to make this uh, day in the life of a software engineer. Uh, I'm the apprenticeship director at the Arkansas Center for Data Sciences. And as some of you may know, uh, we are a nonprofit organization that was, that was formed to begin to address uh, the building and the retaining of talent in the data science and the, and, and the IT uh, profession. And today we're gonna to be really excited to talk about one of the apprenticeship type programs that we've put in place uh, for the occupation of a software engineer. And we do this day in the life as a way to give many folks, whether it's candidates looking to enter the IT profession or even employers who are uh, thinking about what they're gonna to need to do to advance their talent capabilities this particular session. And this has gone really well. We do this once a month. And today we're very fortunate to have Joseph Yancey with us here today. Joseph, I wanna thank you for being here. And I wanna really spend most of the time uh, giving you a chance to share uh, a little bit about yourself. So why don't you start by telling us about your background and, and the company you're with today and, and we'll lead into some really interesting questions. So with that, welcome Joseph. Hey Lonnie, um, thanks for the, for the introduction. Um, I get, my name is Joseph Yancey. Uh, right now I work for Emory Solutions. Um, we do a lot of kind of automation work for manufacturing companies, um, pretty much any, any help that any business needs with their, with their IT software development, that kind of stuff we'll, we'll do. Um, my history, um, I graduated from ASU about a decade ago. Um, I worked for Rockfish Interactive for about five years, um, did a lot of kind of higher profile um, Nike, Procter and Gamble, um, bicycle playing cards, Walmart, Sam's Club, that kind of work. So, a lot of high profile stuff. Um, got a little kind of stressed out doing that because some of that it can be a lot. So, um, went to work for the Information Network of Arkansas for around five years or so. Um, did a lot of software development work for the state. So, if you've ever um, if you've ever paid the state government any money, if you've ever renewed your car tags online, if you've ever used iDrive Arkansas, um, I, I had a hand in, in a lot of that kind of work. And most recently, I, I came to work with uh, Emory Solutions. So, Joseph, you know, you, you mentioned a lot of different uh, opportunities there for uh, what we'll talk about today and that software development. But, uh, you know, the first question is based on our title, right? Uh, you know, what is it like in the day in the life of a software developer, and uh, you can reflect on early days, you know, your 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 middle part of your career, or even where you are right now. So, what's a day in the life like? Okay, um, so right now I work from home. So, get up in the morning, I drive my kids to school, and then I come back and I sit in my office. Um, I've had jobs where I I came into the office every day. Um, a, a lot of companies will kind of let you choose. It seems like like more and more companies are, are letting it, letting their IT employees work remotely. So there's there's a lot of choice there. There's a lot of flexibility um, in this job and in this industry. Um, I wear what I want. I mean, I'm wearing a button down t-shirt right now. I'm not meeting with clients or wearing slacks or a tie or anything like that. Um, as far as my kind of day-to-day -day schedule, I'd say about 20% of the time I'm meeting with clients, talking about what their business needs are, um, presenting solutions that we've developed for them, that kind of thing. So uh, about 20% is, is that kind of work. Um, 10 to maybe 20% is mentoring other developers and, and leading projects. So not actual software development, writing code, but more kind of architectural, helping other developers with, with what they need to be doing on the project, that kind of thing. And then 60 to 70% is heads down, building software, writing code, interacting with databases and making things look pretty on the web and that kind of stuff. So that's 
that's the general, like what my day-to-day -day looks like. Um, I've had a lot of different opportunities to do things that are very kind of high profile that, that, that people see every day, all day long. Um, I've done a lot of kind of, I don't want to call it boring, but it's stuff that you don't really see kind of on the back end. Um, so I've, I've done a lot of that. Um, it just kind of is what it is. I guess you, you, you have, you have stuff that's really engaging and you have stuff that's kind of maybe not so much and just pays the bills. Um, really just depends on your, on your, your clients and that kind of thing. But overall, it's a pretty flexible job. Um, I'm just kind of trusted to, to do good work and make sure that the client's happy. Joseph, before I ask you the next question, I want, I want to take you back though, to maybe those early days. So you, so you've left your, your college days. You now have entered into this profession. I, it, it seems as though your, your day percentage of your day would have been a little different because you weren't ready to mentor others yet. And you <laughs> didn't have design and so forth. I mean, that is part of this progression of, of a career path as a software developer, right? As a senior now versus you were a junior at that time. What was that kind of day like? Can you reflect back on that? You mentioned that was pretty spec driven, I assume, and, and so forth. So there's, so as a, as a junior, there's a lot more kind of learning what you need to learn, if that makes sense. Um, so you have to be really comfortable communicating. So if you kind of, you're, you're, you've been asked to build a certain thing, you've got a form that needs to do something, if you get hung up on something instead of spinning your wheels for a couple of hours, you may reach out to a senior and say, hey, I'm maybe a little bit hung here. Is, is everybody still there? My screen kind of froze for a second. Everybody's there. Okay, good. Um, anyway, so uh, you kind of uh, go through and you 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 do work through the the spec of of what you've been asked to do. Um, you're maybe a little bit more kind of process driven. So in in you you may be working with other developers that are that are mentoring you. Um, I guess that's really kind of where I'm at on that. Lonnie, are you still there? Uh oh, Joseph, can you hear me? I can hear you. I think we lost Lonnie. I think yeah, his internet just went out with the storm. But but if you want to go ahead and discuss some of the items that you and Lonnie talked about this morning, I know that uh, you spoke before we started. Okay, yeah. One of the things that he asked me was um, what some of the uh, skills that make someone as a as a software developer successful. Um, so I, I, I would say on, on that, the biggest skill is really being able to understand uh, complex topics relatively quickly. So if you, if you have a really difficult problem, being able to take that difficult problem and instead of getting overwhelmed with that problem, you can break it down into maybe 10 smaller problems or 10, 10, 10 smaller little, little buckets. And then if that individual bucket is, is, if one of those buckets is too difficult to solve, then you break that in, down into smaller problems. And you kind of keep doing that until you get it to where your problems are small enough that you can solve them um, individually. Uh, so basically being able to, to look at something that's really difficult and not get overwhelmed with it because the, it's you, you really do kind of have to architect your solution. You can't build a bridge by saying, I'm gonna slap a beam across here. You've gotta, you gotta break it down into the individual pieces that need to be built. Um, Another thing is um, don't be afraid to do some do some research and hunt for your solutions. Um, this is one of these things where there's not. How do I say this? Um, no, none of the problems are new problems. Uh, somebody else has already came across the, the things that you're trying to build, the problems that you're having um, to do a little bit of research and see kind of what the best way to solve this is. Don't try and reinvent the wheel. There's probably a framework that gets you most of the way to, to where you need to be. Um, another one of the things is really just communication. So you have to be really good at communicating with your clients, uh, with your coworkers. That's the biggest mistake that I see, or that's the biggest issue that I see in software developers, software engineers, just IT people in general, um, is they don't know how to communicate very well. Um, so if you spend a week or two weeks working on a problem that you find out wasn't quite the right problem, that's a, that's a wasted week or two weeks. 
um, if you if you communicate well and you you go through the effort to figure out what what the actual problem is for your client for your employer whatever um, and then as you're as you're building you kind of go back to them and you say hey is this is this what you're looking for is this what you're wanting that can get you a, a lot of the way there and, and keep you from from wasting a lot of time um, and then also IT people can be a little kind of difficult to talk to sometimes. So if you if you're if you learn how to become good with communication and good with clients, you can make them feel quite a bit more at ease. Um, so that's kind of really the 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 skills and the attributes that I think really makes a good software engineer. Great, great. And I know Lonnie had a few other questions that that you covered this morning. Um, yeah, he asked me if I had any kind of um, unique stories that uh, could demonstrate the the activities of, of the work or, or kind of what what a, a kind of th thing that you might come across is. And, and one of them that I had, and actually right now the storm outside is a is a good example for it. Um, so I was lead developer on iDrive Arkansas for I guess about five years whenever I was working for the information information network of Arkansas. Um, iDrive Arkansas, if you don't know what it is, it's a tool that the state uses to relay to the citizens what the status of the highways and roads in, throughout the state are. Um, so if there's a winter storm that comes in, so iDrive may have almost no traffic most of the time, especially overnight, because there's not a lot of people on the roads in the middle of the night, right? But if there's a winter storm that comes in, it's been snowing for 12 hours and people want to know, like they, they want to wake up at 6 a.m. and they want to know, hey, um, are, is, is the highway covered in ice? Can I get to work? That kind of thing. So all of a sudden the amount of traffic, um, of, of people that are trying to access the website, it's like a wall of traffic. If you actually look at the charts, you'll see almost nothing down here. And then 6 AM it'll spike way up. Um, so we wake up and I drive Arkansas is down. It's just not functioning. Um, the, the servers are supposed to automatically build new servers and, and ramp up the, the amount of resources that it has, but the wall was so steep that it couldn't, um, that it like, it, it couldn't meet the demand. Um, so we actually wound up re-architecting iDrive in, in such a way that, that none of the traffic actually wound up going to the servers at all um, was static assets. Um, so it, it's just, that those are the kind of problems you, like you, you wake up at six o'clock in the morning and things are just down, what do you do? You've got to figure out um, what your solution is. You've got to figure out exactly what the problem is, um, that kind of thing. Um, hey, Lonnie, I'm glad to see you back. Yes, the power of technology. So what if I couldn't <laughs> get on uh, the internet? I can do it via my phone and cellular data. So here I am. Uh -huh. uh, what uh, what have you, have you covered some of the, the skills and attributes that are really important in the job? Yeah, we I I covered I covered that, and then um, I I gave him a little a little story about um, about working with iDrive Arkansas. Um, Lonnie, I'll, I'll just kind of recap this for for you. It's um, I, iDrive is the platform that the state uses to to relay the uh, highway status to the citizens, and we just kind of talked about a, a a problem that I that I had there that just kind of shows um, like what kind of stuff can can come up. It demonstrates the the activities that, that 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 we do it's 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 not all just you get an assignment you go build the thing and then you wait for the next assignment sometimes like crazy stuff happens and you get phone calls at 6 a.m saying hey this thing's down and you've got to architect a solution to fix it that, that's great the people on here will recognize problem solving and critical thinking as being key attributes right mm -hmm. um, absolutely yeah that, that problem solving was actually my first key attribute was being able to take complex problems and break them down. Yeah. Well, one of the things you've mentioned, because you've been in a number of different roles with different uh, organizations, is this idea of how much it uh, affects small, medium, and large companies across every industry, right? So mm -hmm. IT affects everybody. So that, tell us a little bit about how you view, you know, kind of your trade or profession in the big picture of its, how important it is and how critical software is. Um, well, it's, it's, it's one of those things where individual, individual software applications, whether you're building it for walmart.com or you're building a 
check-in system for your local dental office, it's incredibly important to that business. I mean, the scale might be different, um, but the work is, is, is very similar. Um, you, can, you can really make business much more efficient. So right now I'm working with a lot of manufacturing clients. Um, so we're, we're automating processes. So there may be some process that right now, um, Mary Sue is having to go in and she's spending six hours a day going through a very tedious process that she's not really having to even think about. She's just clicking that button, clicking this button, getting this piece of paper, printing this thing, having somebody check in, whatever. Um, so we, we, we can take that process and we can move it to a 15 minute process. Now we've freed her up for six hours a day so she can actually go do the important work of the business. Um, so there, there's a lot of, of efficiencies that can be gained through software development. Um, one of the things that, that, that I really like about it is it can really make people's lives easier too. So um, we did some work for, um, for a nonprofit that helps, um, find, that helps veterans find resources that are available to them. Um, so the, the example that was, that was given to me was there's a, there's a person that there's a veteran that worked for, for four years in the military and didn't know the entire time the military has daycare available. Um, so we, we built some tools to where they can find what those resources are. So we, we can really make people's lives better and easier. I mean, in a super mundane way, I mean, everybody on this call has, has walked into the DMV and sat there for two hours so they can renew their tax, right? Nobody wants to do that. Nobody wants to sit there in the DMV for two hours and renew their tags. So instead you can go online, you can spend five minutes, you can um, put in your tag number, you can say, I wanna renew it and they'll mail you the sticker and you're done in five minutes. So that's, that's something that can really save people a lot of time, make their lives easier. Um, it can also like, Literally, you, you can save lives with technology. I mean, with iDrive Arkansas, um, if people don't know that, that the highway's icy, they may go out there and they may get stuck and freeze to death or get in a car wreck or, or whatever. But, in, but instead, they can check on their phone and they can see, hey, I know that that highway is closed. Or, I mean, I've got a friend that spent a couple of years writing software um, that ran life support machines. That terrifies me. I don't want to be writing software that's keeping people alive. Um, but that, that was the thing that he did. And he, he literally wrote software that kept people alive. So I think, I think the, the bigger picture is, is it can really be, I mean, the pays well, um, you, you, you can work for companies if where that's your end goal, people, people do software development in the stock market, that kind of thing, but there can really be a pretty large altruistic side of things, uh, with software development as well. And that's, that's really what I like. Well, you know, you've, you've alluded to these benefits uh, and the, the attributes of a software developer, but in the environment that you work in either today or in some of your past, you have to work with other people, right? You're working in a team. People have different responsibilities. Tell us about what that might be like when you're working with somebody who's the project manager, somebody's the business analyst, uh, you know, somebody's maybe a designer and you're the developer, uh, you know, uh, just all the various uh, aspects of who handles the infrastructure and equipment and tech support and blah, blah, blah. How's that been for you? Explain how that is to work in team environments like that. I, I, I think the, the biggest thing to remember there is to over communicate. Um, and I, I, I kind of alluded to this earlier. One of the biggest issues that I see um, with IT professionals is they don't communicate well. Um, they kind of want to, they want to get their task and they want to go in, in their box for two weeks and they want to come back. Um, and that, that doesn't really work. If, you, if, you're on, if you're working on a team, you've got a project manager, the project manager needs to know um, what, what you're doing, what has been done, what your plan is, what you're getting hung up on. Um, and they, they don't know that if you don't tell them. Um, the, the, the designer needs to know like, oh, you put, and I've, I've actually had this happen. Um, we, we, we had a designer that, um, that put a button that, was, that said add to calendar. And the, the client approved it and it was a like fortune 100 level client. So it was difficult to get it unapproved. Um, but they didn't talk to the developers about what does that add to calendar button do? Um, so this, this tool didn't have a calendar system. Does that mean we need to build a whole calendar system? Does that mean that we just download an iCal file so you can add it to your own calendar? Um, what, what, what does this mean? So you have to, you have to communicate about what are the expectations here? Yeah. Um, that, that's, 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 that's really, it's really all about 
just communicating. And if you if you don't know how well you're communicating, over communicate. If you're over communicating and you don't need to communicate that, communicate that much, people will tell you. Joseph, that's a great example. Uh, I can't tell you. That's uh, really good. You know, uh, thinking about more people coming into the IT profession, and especially we'll use software development as being a high demand area. What kind of advice would you give somebody considering the profession? Uh, you know, we're trying to stress that maybe you don't have to have that four-year degree like you had and I had. You know, maybe the, the idea is that people with some of these capabilities and problem solving and aptitude can enter our profession, right? And, and be really good at it if they have technical aptitude. What, what advice would you give to people as they're pursuing and beginning to take that first, uh, first job and taking some of the training and so forth? My biggest piece of advice would be to always strive to be learning something. Um, I've worked with a lot of people that don't have four-year degrees. Um, they, they may have went through kind of a, a boot camp program that was a six or eight or 12 week program um, where they, they kind of learn the basics um, and then they try and get an internship or an apprenticeship somewhere. I've worked with people that have um, done the, the online, um, just kind of review at your own pace kind of things. Um, but really my, my biggest advice, and honestly, I, I still do this, always try and learn something every day. Um, if, you're, if, you're, if you're interested in this, um, if you, if you kind of always want to keep going, if you always want to, want to learn more, te technology moves really quickly. Um, it, even as a senior, if I didn't learn anything for a couple of years, I'd be way behind. I mean, we'd, I'd have, I'd have the, the junior developers that have only been doing this for a couple of years um, coming in and they, they would know the new technologies be better than me. So I, I, I still have to learn something every day. Um, I still have to tinker my, my, I'll be sitting in my office and my wife is like, you, you worked eight hours today. Why are you in your office at nine o'clock? And I'm like, oh, I'm tinkering. I'm, I'm always doing something. And I mean, earlier in my career, I did, I did a lot more of that tinkering. Um, I, I do a, a little bit less now, but I'm still always tinkering with something. I'm always trying to to learn something new. Um, I, I think a, a lot of the, the kind of boot camp programs, the, um, the, the online uh, take a course in this, that, that can be really valuable. It's, it's, it's not a thing where you have to have the four-year degree. I, I think the four-year degree is, is, is valuable in, in, in some respects, but I mean, to, to be able to do this job, it's really more about, under, about being able to do problem solving, um, about being able to communicate, um, if you, if you have an analytical mind where you can, you can break down complex tasks into simple tasks, you, you, you can, you can do this job. I mean, I, I, I came in, um, to, to, to my, my four-year degree and initially I was going to do computer science. And then I saw the, the math course load and I was like, mm -mm, that's too much math. Um, so I, I, I wound up with a management of information technology degree at, at my degree is not actually in programming. Yep. Um, I, I did wind up with a minor in it just because I, I wound up liking it, but, but a lot of the, the business side of things really helped me. A lot of the really learning to communicate and um, understanding what the problems are. That's, that's really what this job is. Well, you, you said it really well. Uh, before you know, we engage this last final uh, set of questions, Lisa, have we been getting anything through the chat? see anything but I was gonna I was gonna comment Joseph I just find that real interesting because I use that app I drive Arkansas quite a bit when I'm traveling and thank you so much <laughs> for your contributions <laughs> because it's very helpful if, if folks on the call don't have that app on your phone it, it's wonderful uh, to see where wrecks are and and if you're gonna have delay in traffic it's a great app mm -hmm. Well, the, the traffic cameras um, are something that I, that, that I, I was I was really instrumental in in, in building. Um, the state didn't have a traffic camera system at all, and they, they came to us and they said, "Hey, we we want to put up a couple hundred traffic cameras." And we're like, uh, "Video streams are hard," um, so we had to do a lot of research and had to do a lot of work to 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 make that work. Um, so that, that that's another one of those kind of interesting stories. Is is um. You, you, you get, you get these, these big asks and, and you, you feel overwhelmed and you, you kind of have to do a little bit of research and figure out, okay, how do we handle these video streams? What's the best way to do it? So we can wind up with a couple thousand people viewing one stream, like whenever they, they blew up the bridge uh, that, that, that crossed the river, um, that, that, that was before we had the traffic camera system and that stream kept going down. And that was one thing that we weren't going to have happen. So you just kind of have to 
do that research, figure out what tools are out there and what the best solution is. So that leads to a question for uh, uh, folks that are on this uh, call. Uh, think about user groups and uh, peer groups and, you know, do you use them in your research? I mean, are you trying to learn when others may have already addressed something that you're having to, to deal with that there might be solutions, you know, across industry sectors or other folks have already maybe, you know, addressed some things that you're now encountering? Tell, tell the audience a little bit about that. I I kind of kind of mentioned that that a, a little bit oh. earlier. Um, okay. I, I I don't like to reinvent the wheel. I mean, I, I always have Stack Overflow um, up on on my computer. Stack Overflow is a it's a, a kind of programming resource website. Um, if 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 I need to, let's say I need to generate an Excel file from some download or something like that, I'm not going to go figure out how Excel files are architected and 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 do a bunch of work. I'm I'm going to go hey, is there a tool that can generate Excel files? And there'll be one and I can install it. And then, hey, I have that tool. I'm not, it's so you, I mean, you can you can reinvent the wheel all day long, but then you'd wind up with a wagon and customers aren't expecting wa wagons. They're expecting Toyota Camrys, so. <laughs> good, good. Uh, the, the other thing is for students that might be watching this, you know, we are recording this. So a broader audience will eventually you know, see this. And uh, I found, and so this is my question for you, that there are people who are majoring in something, but it's not computer science or IT. Uh, they have an interest area, you know, a domain that they find interesting, whether that's agriculture or healthcare or, you know, just general business or retail. Uh, you mentioned manufacturing for that matter. What would you recommend as kind of this, you mentioned getting a, you know, not too much math, but you needed Lonnie, did we lose you again? I think so. Am I back? Yeah, yep. yeah, you're back. Okay. Can, can you re-ask that question? Yeah, I'll, I'll make it a, brief, a more brief question. Can students who are majoring in something other than IT and computer science find value in like just understanding digital design and digital transformation and a little bit of software? Because it's going to affect their job no matter what field they go into. Is that fair? Would you... Would you make that recommendation to people in other areas? Because there's lots of jobs in IT. There might not be a lot of jobs in the field that they're studying. So, oh, I, I, absolutely. Um, I think I had some some networking courses that were really valuable. And so everything nowadays is running through the internet. The internet powers the world essentially. Um, I had some networking courses that that kind of show you kind of the architecture of the internet, of how the internet works. Um, I think that could be really valuable for anybody that is in any kind of business at all. Um, I think if you are interested in technology um, and, and maybe, maybe not even a, a college course, but but some kind of, of um, simple software development, like, okay, take, a, take a, a couple of week Python 101 or something like that, just to kind of understand how software works. Um, I think that's that's really valuable for a lot of people. I mean, I, I've, I've got a good friend. He's a radiologist. Um, his, his he's super smart and his brain works different than most people's. But um, he, he's a radiologist and, and he decided I want to learn software development. So he's been taking software development courses um, and he's using that to build tools for his radiology office. That's fantastic. Great, great example. I'm glad you uh, had those to, to offer to our audience today. Uh, Lisa, any other questions? How about anybody that's still yeah. on live here? Uh, actually, Lonnie, we do have some good questions in the chat. First of all, Joseph, um, Lou asked, could you share what you can, uh, what can get you in the door of software development? And um, I guess to expand on that, um, they said, like, did you build a functional app before applying for the positions? And also, do you use agile development at your job now? So that's the two questions. I'll, I'll answer the first one first, and I, I'll, I'll answer them as kind of two parts. Right. Um, so um, I I've done a couple of I, I've I've had interviews that had uh, code development components to them. Um, I haven't built tools as kind of a get the foot in the door to, to get the interview kind of thing. My 
my first job out of college that was in my career was an internship. Um, so kind of, kind of that, that same apprentice mindset. Um, I, so in college, they don't, you, you learn a little bit, like you learn the, the basics of, of software development, but most of what I know I've learned kind of on the job. Um, so, so really try and find an internship, um, something like that is, is really the best kind of foot in the door. If you, if you can show, Hey, I've built this thing, I, I, I think that is valuable. So you can, can get some trust kind of day one. Um, it's hard to find people, find software developers that, that, that know what they're doing. And if you can show, Hey, I'm interested in this, I can learn quickly. I've done a little bit of this, a little, little, little bit of that, even if it's not for, for paying customers, you can say, Oh, I, I built a tool that keeps up with my books that I love to read. Here's the, here's the tool. I think that's, that, that could be valuable in lieu of, of kind of traditional work experience. Um, but, but ultimately for me, the way I got into it was, was through an internship. Um, so I found it through my college. Um, they wound up hiring me after the internship, um, worked there for about a year, year and a half. And then I kind of continued on with the, with the rest of my career. Um, what was the other, what was the other part of that question? Agile, agile. Are you okay. using um, agile? So I, I have used agile in different companies. My current company is not so agile development is one of those things where it's, it's a little buzzwordy. Um, there are companies that use true proper 100% like proper agile. There are companies that, that use 100% proper waterfall development and that's very cyclical. You, you build something and then you kind of present it and then you, you iterate on it over and over again. Um, most companies that I've worked for use a little bit of a combination. So um, with agile development, you'll assign points to tasks and you'll say, okay, I can do so many points in a week. Um, and then you, 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 you commit to getting those points done. You, you, you do that work and then you say, okay, what's the next, what's the next set of tasks that we do. But in reality, you're going to have to iterate on all of that. So, but, okay, you've got 20 points worth of stuff. I, I, I hate the way they do points. It's really just hours, but uh, Agile calls it points. Um, but you're, you're really going to have to iterate on that. You're going to build something and then it's going to need changes. So you're going to have to do a little bit of waterfall. So nobody's really truly agile or truly waterfall. It's always a little bit of a mix. Um, everybody's kind of doing their own thing. Everybody's winging it a little bit, even the big companies. Okay, that's great. Lisa, is there more? I'm checking. Someone asked, how did you get your jobs? Was it through networking or otherwise? Um, my internship, um, straight out of college, uh, the Dean of my college, who was, a, who was my advisor, helped me find that internship, um, worked there for a little bit. Um, my next job, um, oddly enough, I saw a job posting online. I was buying concert tickets, uh, for a concert that was in Houston and my in-laws lived in Houston and I applied to that job and just happened to get it. Um, lived there for a year left. I don't recommend moving to Houston. Um, <laughs> Uh, so then um, after that, uh, whenever I went to work for Rockfish Interactive, um, that was, I kind of knew somebody who knew somebody who mentioned the company. And then I just went through their normal kind of apply online process, um, was able to get my foot in the door there. Since then, though, pretty much all of my jobs have been, have been the network that I've built um, with just people that, people that I know, people that I've worked with in the past. Um, I mean... I'll, I'll, I'll work with somebody for a, for a year or two, and then they'll, they'll go on and they'll, they'll work at another company and, and they'll, they'll take me out to lunch and they'll say, Hey, what do we, what do we need to do to get you? Um, so I, I think, I think early on, it's going to have to be just a little bit of apply where you find the jobs, but as you build your network, um, most of my jobs later on in my career have been, um, based on the, the people that I know, the people that, that, that trust my work. And that, that's really a lot of it. It's just do really good work, communicate really well with everybody. If people know that you do, that, that you do a good job, um, they're, they're going to trust, they're going to trust you and they're going to want to work with you in the future. So if they go on somewhere else and their bosses ask them, Hey, do you know a good software developer? They'll go, Hey, I, I know Joseph, I'd hire him. Hey, Joseph. That's real. Go ahead, Lisa. Oh. 
real quick question. I'm, my name is Jenny Sales. I'm in uh, talent. Maybe they talk to our candidates and kind of talk, share with them different resources and networking uh, um, ideas they can do to build their pool of candidate or networking friends. Where would you say, other than work, is another great resource to build your network of IT friends? User groups. Um, so I know Little Rock has a has a relatively healthy .NET user group. Um, even if you're not necessarily doing a lot of of .NET programming, but if you're doing other programming that's somewhat related, go to the user group events. Um, if there are conferences, go to the conferences, talk to people, get to know people, um, that, that, that kind of thing. It's, it's really, a, later on in your career, it's really a lot of who you know. Um, so you, you've, gotta, you've gotta be kind of in the world a little bit. And the, the easiest way to do that is just to go to user group events. Um, I think there's a meetup.com has, has a, a pretty exhaustive list of, of what user group events there are in various towns. And um, I know used to, uh, there would be boot, um, what was it called? I'm blanking on the name of it, so I'm just gonna continue, sorry. That's okay, that's okay. That's okay, I appreciate it. One of the uh, two things that we do focus on is, you know, sharing with them how to build, and then of course that communication piece, which is um, very important. So thank you for reiter reiterating that. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. Well, I think we're about ready to come to a close. I don't want us to uh, end without one last opportunity for anybody else to, to get a question uh, answered from Joseph. You've been wonderful. Joseph, this is great. Thanks, uh, Lonnie. Yep, Lisa, anything else? No, I don't think so. Um, I think that's it. Okay, well, as we wrap up, I wanna thank everybody for being here, but a special thanks and, and a big hand, if you will, to. Uh, Joseph Yancey with Emory Solutions for providing such great insight today about uh, his current day in the life job as a senior uh, software developer, but also the expectation for you in an exciting career field uh, in IT. So with that, I wanna say thank you to everyone and we'll say good day. Thank you very much. <laughs>